Hello everyone, this is Dr. Krad, and today I wanted to share with you a case that started out seemingly normal. We took out the cataract and now we implanted the lens implant. It's a toric lens, so I'm going to align it appropriately, but before I do that, I want to remove viscoelastic uh, from the eye, from behind the lens and in front. So I usually just tilt up the optic that way, so I make space for my IA to go behind the lens. So I remove the viscoelastic from behind, now I'm going to come in front. I tilt the optic from different sides to make sure that I get any trapped viscoelastic. Wait, did you see that? Let's pause and then rewind. There it is. Now, when this was happening so quickly, I thought maybe either it was a piece of cortex or there was a tiny lens fragment way in the periphery. So I very gently aspirate in this area to see if I catch something, but I don't see anything. Nothing is showing up. So at this point, I want you to take a look at the rest of the eye. Do you see anything unusual? And I'm going to check behind the iris. So I ask for a Kuglin hook. Do you have like a Kuglin? And still nothing to be found. So what was that dark peripheral shadow? It appeared for an instant and then disappeared. And here it reveals itself. So this is a fairly brisk bleed. So the priority is to seal the eye, to pressurize it and seal the incisions. And through the paracentesis, I'll try to wash out the heme from the anterior chamber. But each attempt to wash it out causes more bleeding. And at this point, I can't even see the IOL anymore. The anterior chamber remains formed. There's no shallowing. The eye pressure seems good. So I decide just to make sure my incisions are watertight and the pressure is good and I'll just wait a little bit so that the source of the bleeding coagulates and stops. So if you look at the inferior part of the eye, you can see these abnormal blood vessels near the limbus. Other than those limbal blood vessels, is there anything else that you see that can increase the risk of this patient bleeding during surgery? So now that I waited a little bit, I'm hoping that the source of the bleeding has coagulated and I'm gonna irrigate the anterior chamber with a very gentle, non-turbulent flow of BSS and I'm not gonna point it directly at the area where the bleeding started. I make sure that the flow of BSS is extremely gentle, hoping that I can clear out the AC as much as possible so that I don't leave behind a big hyphema on day one. And so far this strategy seems to be working. Uh, the anterior chamber is getting clearer and I'm not seeing more heme coming out of the source on the top right of the screen. So here I speed up the video because I want to save you some time, but I'm repeating the process of gently irrigating the AC. Uh, very gentle stream, not to disrupt the source of the bleed. But do you notice the underlying diagnosis yet? It's in view. So if you don't, I'll tell you in just a moment, but I'm sure most of you already know. All right, back to normal speed here. Just cleared the last little bit. Pressure is good. And I also want to make sure that I never drop the eye pressure too quickly. Dropping it too quickly can make the bleeding start again. And here is your underlying diagnosis. You can see this all the way to the eyelid margin. The abnormal blood vessels are apparent not only on the skin, but on the surface of the eye, as well as inside the eye. The abnormal blood vessels can also be found in the brain. This is a feature of Sturge-Weber syndrome or encephalofacial angiomatosis. 
the toric lens implant is well aligned at this point i'm just watching the eye and making sure that there's no more bleeding i'm decreasing the pressure slowly till about a minimum of around 20. i don't want to drop it too low because there's higher chance of bleeding a glaucoma can be present in about half of these patients so they need regular monitoring and i'll show you what she looked like uh, post-operatively in clinic and uh, fortunately she did very well she could see very well the first day she was 2025 and you can see all these perilimbal abnormal blood vessels as well as on her lid margin of course one doesn't have to clean out the ac so thoroughly but it's very nice to see a very quiet ac in the immediate post-operative period and of course this is a unilateral condition you will not find the same abnormal blood vessels on the other side. Fortunately, she did very well. I hope you did find this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.